Welcome to City TV Travel Television with hostess Rebecca Blackwell, traveling to cities around the world. Hi, this is Rebecca Blackwell speaking. Coming up now on City's Good Life Holiday Show are two major stories. One from L.A. featuring Japan's treasure, Saki. And the other story live from Miami Beach. As Miami is number one in the country now as a leader in cigar manufacturing and retailing today. Saki for the Good Life. This week's feature story. Three superstars have arrived in California as they begin a long-awaited tour on the tables of the finest restaurants in the world. They are Nagasaki, Fukumitsuya Saki, and Daishinshu Saki. In this edition of City TV, we will learn about these super premium sakis, what makes them premium, and how California wine connoisseurs, traditionally revered as trendsetters, are pairing sake with seafood and other meals exactly the way they would with wine. But first, before we go on location to four top LA restaurants to add more to this subject and their impressions of current trends, here is a description of just what sake is. From Japan, the drink of choice for thousands of years has been sake, a brewed rice wine, referred to as a wine. Sake made from fermented rice is technically a beer. The Japanese find sake to be the perfect accompaniment to Japanese and Asian cuisine. Join us now, the Jozu, located on Melrose as owner and in Akana, shows us how he incorporates sake into a typical Jozu dining experience. My name is Andy Nakano. I own restaurant Jozu here in Los Angeles on Melrose. And I just want to talk a little bit about sake. Our menu here is California Pacific with Asian influences and I have a premium sake list. I feel sake goes very well with our cuisine and that varies in uh, price ranges. We have warm hot sake which is normally a house generic sake that's been heated to the final premium sakes that range from twenty dollars to two hundred dollars for a decanter similar to this. What makes these decanters special they have a nice pocket here to keep the sake chilled and when we present the sake to the tables everyone gets a, a complimentary taste of our sake as they arrive to introduce them to the finer premium sakes from Japan. What makes sake premium, the premium brands are the, the rice that makes the sake has been chilled, it's been uh, polished. The, the finer you polish the rice, the more the premium of the sake is. And uh, sake has become very popular. Uh, normally hot sake is served in a, a tokuri like this. Two, we have bamboo, a larger uh, bamboo to a larger decanter bamboo. Michelle Richard, chef owner of Citrus Restaurant located on Melrose, creates an elegant yet comfortable dining under the star's atmosphere at Citrus. And we want to have you meet with us at Citrus now. I'm sitting at one of the favorite restaurants by just about everyone. It's Citrus. It's on Melrose Avenue. And we have a picture of the famous celebrity chef behind us, Michelle Richard, who is the owner, chef owner. Uh, we're joined today by Julio Iturbi, who is the general manager at this beautiful restaurant here, Citrus. Thank you. We are approaching the holidays. We're just getting ready. We're in our holiday segment here. These shows are our good life holidays. Certainly Citrus qualifies for the, the good life. Uh, can we expect to see Michelle Richard around this holiday season? And what's it like to be here in the holidays? Well, uh, the place uh, is transformed uh, transform itself. Uh, we'll do decorate with uh, Christmas trees and all sorts of decorations. Uh, Michelle will be here during the holidays, indeed. Um, uh, what, what we do is on uh, Christmas Eve we have a special menu, and then on New Year's Eve we have uh, the New Year's party, which uh, includes uh, dancing, um, a disc jockey, and, and also a set menu, which is, uh, is about seven course, a seven-course menu. This portion of City TV is brought to you by the three super premium sakis being introduced in California by the Sparza Corporation. Nagasaki, as you see here, has been produced in Japan for four generations and more than 100 years. Managing Director Soshi Naga of Nagasaki Breweries Incorporated is quoted as saying, Our character is smooth taste and we use the best quality of everything, especially rice. 
His goal? Introduce sake much like you would a fine champagne. Daishinshu sake. Again, Daishinshu sake has been brewed through five generations and is described without exception as one of the finest sakes produced in Japan. Sparsa Corporation General Manager George Yamashita says, We want to interest transcending adults who are into fine wines. We are trying to target consumers who haven't been into sake in the past. Fukumitsuya sake, even older than the previous sakes. Fukumitsuya consistently refines its techniques to preserve the innate characteristics of quality sake making. Matsutaro Fukumitsu. President of Fukumitsuya exclaims, the challenge is to attain excellence in a crowded market. What he's referring to is that in Japan, there are more than 2,000 sake companies, but only 200 making premium sake. He believes the future of sake is in the hands of the premium sake producers like Fukumitsuya. New in the Beverly Hills area is Crustacean, a French colonial Asian seafood restaurant that is truly a feast for the eyes. Here is Elizabeth Ahn, owner of Crustacean, and Kevin Lee to talk with us about traditional ceremonial sake and the new experimental sake. We're set up right here with a, uh, a, a traditional sake setup. And Elizabeth, how do you, uh, is this t traditionally how you would serve like a warm sake at a dinner? Yes. Uh, this is a traditional setup that we would have uh, when it's served warm, and this this particular bottle is a typical. Um, is the stylized? It's very uh, very antique from the 19th century period. And may I serve you a glass, Rebecca? <laughs> well, I've been told, as you're pouring one for Kevin now, that sake should be poured for you. It's poured in friendship, and the meaning of sake is that someone gives you a friendship gesture. Yes. Is Absolutely. And, and, and I, don't then I don't know if you saluted, but... <laughs> Elizabeth, so, uh, so we can preserve the good fortune of the sake. Let's make sure the friendship continues here. Here we go for uh, Elizabeth, and then okay. and then we all drink. Yes. Is that the reward? Kampai. Here we go. Kampai. And get a shot. Kevin, uh, you were telling me there are some recipes for the sake drinks that you have here. You have a sake menu. Oh yeah, we have like, uh, just like another martini selections, but it's made out of sake, and we have about four popular selections. It's like uh, Asian uh, lemongrass, and then a Tahitian vanilla, and a Fijian ginger, and red jalapeno. This is just like an Asian flavor, French colonial style of sake. So, I mean, you enjoy a totally different style of sake, which is, uh, is getting to really popular right now. I think we should have sake bars. You know, we've got the caviar bar, champagne bar, martini bar. Let's have the sake bar. Well, that's what we, uh, you know, Crustacean is really famous about, you know, the different kind of sake. This what, that's why we have a lot of clients coming in just for the sake. Looking for a restaurant that is not too big, not too bright, has delicious and varied food, while at the same time was one of L.A.'s most happening places? Stay tuned now as we go to Chaya Brasserie. The scene is set here at Chaya Brasserie, and uh, I'm here with Lawrence Moore. And Lawrence, you're the manager here, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here tonight and take a visit here to Chaya. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Uh, well, why don't we describe what Chaya is all about so that everybody can really enjoy it as much as we are here? Okay, well, Chaya Brasserie is the first restaurant of the two now and three in the latter part of May, and it was started 14 years ago with a little place called La Petite Chaya, and the owner, Yuji Sonoda, is from Japan, and he kind of developed a concept where it's French-Italian with a Japanese flair. Chaya Brasserie now has been very successful from the day this, that it opens the doors here on Alden, and then seven years ago, we ha opened Chaya Venice, which is also somewhat of the same, but the brasserie is established a little more for fine dining and a little more intimate atmosphere. The Chaya Venice is... It's a little more relaxed. It has a sushi bar. We have a lot of the same items due to the fact that we have the same executive chef for both restaurants. But Chaya Venice is down by the beach, and it's just a little more relaxed. Sushi bar, a little more kicked back. You can have a beer. You can have some sake. And you can kind of enjoy yourself. For more information on sake, please call this number, 310-479-6023. 
Don't go. We have much more to come on City. The holiday season is kicking off here in South Beach, Miami Beach, and we are here at the fabulous Shelbourne Beach Resort. And it is fabulous. You can see from the background and what you see where we're sitting here, as you're sitting there in that cold weather, <laughs> that South Beach has definitely got a reason to be here. But we're here with Stuart Weintraub. You know, uh, the weather here today, in my opinion, is perfect. It just couldn't be much better because it's not really too hot, but it's warm enough to go sit and sort of bake on the sand if you wanted to. But what, what would you say as we're looking forward to December, January, and on onward for the folks out there that will be coming here, what kind of uh, temperatures are we looking at? We're talking about glorious weather, and <laughs> people are up north. Let's laugh. <laughs> I'm snickering. In fact, I don't know if they can tell, but we're actually wearing bathing suits right now as well. Um, in the wintertime, Miami Beach is always busy because while you're freezing up north, and we love you very much, we're looking forward to welcoming you down here where the pool will be packed every single day. Um, the weather's glorious. Spend your days by the pool and spend your nights doing South Beach, which is one of the most exciting destinations going anywhere in the world right now. And, of course, uh, Stuart and I are sitting here right in the center of all of this activity here at the Shelbourne. Uh, the Shelbourne has a little history itself, too, and people that keep coming back and share a little of that history with us. Well, the Shelbourne was the first high-rise built in the South Beach area. We're right near the convention center, which is right down the street. Um, this was the home, the original home of the Miss Universe pageant on Miami Beach for many, many years. We have over 200 different types of accommodations here, including executive accommodations, which is spectacular penthouse, two-story townhomes, and one-bedroom executive suites. We are fortunate to welcome many celebrities and VIPs here at this property. We also have over 185 hotel rooms, which have all been fully restored and upgraded, and it's a process that's ongoing as we continue to do wonderful things with this property, a historic property, to be sure to be able to welcome everyone. And the owners of this property were born in this business, and we feature cordial hospitality. I have a rent-a-car. I actually did rent-a-car at the airport and drove in here, but I have really been forcing myself to have to get in the car because I don't have to. I'm right here within walking distance at night to any place I want to be for nightlife, including Ocean Drive. You're away from the noise, but you can walk to everything, and we're just in the midst of finalizing a very special project called the Beach Walk Project, which will be connecting the boardwalk that currently exists on Miami Beach from this area all the way south through the Ocean Drive area, where guests can walk up and down this beautiful beach walk, which will be all natural and beautifully landscaped, and they'll be able to get wherever they want. Uh, South Beach is what street to what street, basically? Currently, <laughs> it's from 1st Street to 24th Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're sitting right here in the center of it at, what, 17th? You're right on the corner of 18th. 18th Street. So we are really in the midst of it. I'm glad that I met you, and I'm glad I had a chance here to, to be here at this very beautiful resort, the Shelbourne, and uh, certainly look for it. It's very centrally located. It's right in the middle of anything that you want to do in South Beach. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Coming to you live now from Miami. We're here on Lincoln Road, and we're at the Cigar Connection. And we've asked the people who are the owners here to join with us. We have David Alvarez, who's joining us today, and Rosie Perez. And they are jointly involved in working with the Cigar Connection in every angle, from manufacture, import, export, and retail. And, of course, we're in your beautiful Lincoln Road retail store today. Uh, David, uh, this is really a family story that we're looking at today. You have of uh, generations of people. How did it all really begin? Well, it began when my great-grandfather was uh, a tobacco roller many years ago in Cuba. And my father and my family had always been around it. And uh, there was a gap in between. We didn't really, we really got out of the business when we came to the United States. And uh, a few years ago when the trend started, uh, we were looking into it. And we had been in the business before, so we decided to open a store here in uh, Lincoln Road Mall. 
with a gentleman we met, which is Don Rene, which is one of our lines that we named after him. And we started this as a hobby here, just to have a cigar store, because it was a trend. Everybody was into it, so we've been here for about two years now. And, and they say the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> now, the, you've been on a roll. It's been very advantageous for you to have this vision here, you know, to have the retail store. Rosie, we want to talk about your cigars. You are manufacturers as well as retailers. I want to know, like, where do the names come from? How do you come up with the names? And we came out with Don Rene after him. We have various sizes. Our Don Rene line is uh, more of a mild to medium cigar. We have a Maduro for a little stronger. What's the name of some of your other cigars? We have another cigar which is very mild cigar with a Connecticut wrapper which is Cojimar. And what does that mean? That was, Cojimar was named in back of the cigar. My cousin picked it because it, it's a name of a beach in Cuba. And, you know, we're all hoping that we can get to Cuba uh, one of these days and go enjoy those beautiful beaches that became so popular and famous years ago. And uh, here we are, you know, but Cuba is so important in the ba fact that you have your Cuban seeds and Cuban tradition in making cigars. Your father has a collection here that I thought was quite interesting. Can you describe for us some of the things he's collected through the years? Yeah, we've gotten a lot of artifacts here of uh, ancient uh, antiques uh, from Cuba that have to deal with uh, cigars and tobacco in general. Rosie, your store goes all the way back, and I noticed you have a humidor back there. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen. Uh, do you carry your own labels back there with a mix of others, or what do you have? Yes, we do. We carry our, our own back there, our two uh, major brands and other brands as well. Now, your two major brands, again, are? Which is Don Rene and Cojimar. Okay. And so we're going to take a tour of your humidor. And I noticed that here in the front, of course, there's a lot of activity going on. You have actual hand rolling going on? Mm -hmm. Actually, we have hand rolling going on every day and on um, Saturday and Sunday as well. We also have flavored cigars. This Senorita is made by Cojimar, which is our vanilla cigar with a sugar-coated tip. And it comes in our 5x30 or our Senora five and a half by 42. Well, let's go light up. Okay, let's go. <laughs> this is definitely a night town. It's Miami Beach, and we are having a lot of fun. We're here at KGB. It's a club that's been here for about a year. We're in the VIP room, and we're here with the Miami Metro people. What better people to talk to tonight who really know what's going on here in Miami. We're with Sharice, who does the market, marketing analysis for Miami Metro, and the associate editor, and her name is Maude, and welcome to our show, City. How are you doing tonight? Great, I'm feeling good. <laughs> okay, well, we'll start with you then, Sharice. Uh, Miami Metro has a new face, a new cover, and it's a pretty exciting one, so why don't we get familiar with it? Yeah, it's exactly right. We're going for a completely new look, a completely new image. It's going to be a lot fresher and a lot hotter. We can't wait until it hits the stands. Exactly, and what you're seeing right now, and I hope we have the camera on it, what you're seeing is Miami and then Metro. You can see there's always going to be this block letter with one color and then the other color here, and it's quite exciting. I like it. Um, this is a place where you come to like get lost. You know, it's debauchery, 100%. There's something very special happening here in Miami on Friday nights, and it's at the Cigar Depot. We were lucky enough to be in town on a Friday night so we could get over here. And uh, we've got Ray Granja here, who's the owner of the Cigar Depot, which is a retail store for cigars. Also, he has the Miavana Trading Company, which is a distributorship of cigars. So, Ray, you are surrounded by cigars. <laughs> what do you do on Friday nights here? Uh, usually we have different um, guests that come in. In, cigar manufacturers, cigar reps that come in, and um, different lines of people that come in with humidors, with uh, cigar making people that come in in the industry here in Miami. We have someone here, one of your uh, companies you distribute. Do you want to tell us what he's doing and yeah. about him? Um, their company is Canal Cigars. They're a top manufacturer here located in Miami. Uh, they have an excellent cigar. It's a five blend cigar very mild and uh, he's just one of the guys that usually comes in on Fridays and they roll cigars here for us so that people know what cigars are all made of. Yeah, and you can just sit here and have a glass of wine and look at all the very... How many brands do you have here that you distribute? Um, well in the store, in the retail store, we have like 130 brands. Uh, right now I'm distributing close to um, maybe eight brands. Uh, we just came aboard on the uh, um, Canary Island cigars. 
You were, we're telling me about that. Yeah, that we're going to have them now, and they we're either, they're our only distributor here in um, the United States. Would that be for the United States? The United States. What's the name of that brand? Monte Palma. Okay. That's from the Canary Islands. Oh, well, that's exciting for you then to be the sole distributor. I think we have someone here who is an expert humidor maker. From, uh, Nino Vasquez. He has a very good line of um, humidors that are engraved, uh, personalized with your name on it. And he also has a very good line of cigars, which are Nino Vasquez cigars. Well, why don't we invite him in and join us? Uh, his name is? Tony Sorino. Okay, Tony, we're, we're happy to have you here now, and, and now we want to try to get you into our camera view here. And this is a beautiful humidor. This is what he was talking about. Yeah, this is a 100% cedar uh, lined. We monogram these for our customers with their, uh, with their initials, and they're lined with cedar, and uh, this is actually it's basswood, and it holds 50 cigars. This is our line of cigars. These are... Um, 100% uh, Cuban seeds, four-year-old Dominican long-leaf tobacco, rolled in Dominican Republic, and has a Connecticut wrapper. What is the name of this brand here? This is Nino Vasquez. You were telling me about private labeling. Now, how does that work? Okay, we do a lot of private labeling for different corporations, uh, different sports events. Uh, no minimum orders requires. We do the whole design for them in uh, four-color foil or four-color graphics. About how long does it take to get that? Uh, right now, the turnaround is around 7 to 21 days. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm planning a cigar party and I'm having my name. Okay, well, it sounds great. Some of your best dining experiences will be in Miami, and we are here at a beautiful restaurant, the Tiger Oak Room at the Raleigh. We're here with a celebrity chef. He's here recently, just a couple months. You've been on board here at the Tiger Oak Room. Uh, but we want to meet you, Jeffrey Murray, and we'd like to hear what you plan to do here at, in Miami. Uh, well, just um, spend some time here and try to revitalize uh, um, some of the dining experience here. You have a beautiful room to work with and um, trying to update and clean up and uh, create a, a sense of dining that's worldly as the beach is so worldly here. We have visitors from all over the place, so my style is sort of a sense of taking all of those different things from everywhere and putting them on one menu. Not necessarily on one plate, <laughs> but, on, but on one menu, so give a choice to everyone. What you're seeing now is a picture of John Spider Sally, former basketball player who is now businessman owner of The Press Room. It's so new, it's only two weeks old. We're here before they even have their grand opening party. Gorgeous room. It's just a beautiful room right here in the National Hotel on Collins Avenue. And we're enjoying it today. We're going to have a cigar conversation here with Maria de Leon, who is the owner of the Cigar Trader Cigar Company. And, and Maria, we want to welcome you to City today. Uh, we're here to talk about your cigars today, and we have uh, a couple cigars right now that are flavored, yes. and we're enjoying that. So tell us, how do you get flavored cigars, and how is it happening here? Is it uh, something people are loving, enjoying? Uh, yes, very much. Uh, we also, when we started with the, uh, the number one was the rum, the rum uh, cigar, and it was really, it, it was incredible. Then we have the vanilla, the vanilla man, that's for the men's, and the uh, sexy vanilla for the ladies, but we have from vanilla up to cognac. We have about seven different uh, uh, flavors. Now let's talk a little bit about your company. You're right here in the Miami area and uh, are you making your cigars here in Miami and uh, tell us about that. Yeah, it's handmade. It's handmade cigars and we have also the regular tobacco that it's import the, um, the, the tobacco leaf. It comes from Santo Domingo, Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, Mexico it has Cuban seed and the wrapper is uh, Sumatra and also uh, Ecuador. What are some of the other labels you have? Okay, we have, uh, we also have a second line right here, that's the uh, Abanique. 
that's uh, from also the same pillar, but it does not have the uh, Mexican. But this name comes from Cuba, okay, it's from the first name that they put in Havana. It's Abanique, it comes from the Indians. Now, Maria, how does it feel to be a woman in this uh, cigar world? Is it, is it comfortable? Is it something that you feel you're really um, accepted totally in it? Yes, and it's very exciting. Very exciting. It's very interesting. It's a lot of hard work. Okay, now we're going to be looking for your cigars around the country. And should we be looking for the name The Cigar Trader or just the, is that the name? Cigar Trader, yes. So we look for The Cigar Trader and then like Sexy Vanilla and Rum. That's the name of the cigars, right, yes. Okay, well, we are doing our whole story this week on Miami and all the people that are making it happen here. So we appreciate meeting with you. Thank you very much and it's been a pleasure. After our conversation with Maria De Leon of the Cigar Trader, and we are really comfortable here, PJ. This is John Sally's new press room, and we want to hear a little bit about his concept and uh, tell us more about John Sally, the man. Well, the concept of the room that John wanted to get across to the public is that uh, this very, very cigar-friendly establishment. We've had excellent reviews from uh, all of Miami Beach. The people come here for even out of town come here and they spend a lot of time in here and, and we kind of want to make people feel welcome make people come in here and, and feel relaxed uh, and that's what we've done successfully uh, the room officially opens Saturday the 29th look for the silver lining well, we're here now at Oceanica Tobacco Shop, and we have another giant in the industry here in Miami, Havana King. Leo Ramirez is joining me here to talk about Havana King cigars, and uh, Leo, welcome. We're happy to have you today. Thank you very much. Uh, you know the name Havana King. It sounds like it has something to do with Havana and something to do with the king. So let's pull up uh, one of your boxes here, and we can describe your really beautiful logo that you have on your bands on all the cigars. Thank you. This this logo is actually a, a picture of of uh, one of the part of Cuba, very famous in Havana. It's called Moro Castle, and uh, this will be uh, the Malecon, which is all the the area that is around the the bay, the, like the harbor. So then we came up with Havana King, the name, and then so we have to pick a place that it was very well known in Cuba. So we chose an area in Havana, and then we made it a crown, like the king. So we chose to to pick our our our, our filler. It's from the Dominican Republic. It's a Cuban seed cigar. Actually, they brought the seeds a long time ago, and the, the cigars have been growing there since the 60s. There's so much that goes into making a cigar. It just looks so simple. It just looks like it's a little cigar, you know, or a big cigar one way or the other. But you do have master rollers and people that really watch over all the leaves and the whole process. What I, I know that you pride yourself in that process. And so explain to us, if you will, what makes the Havana King a really superior cigar. Well, it starts with, it, with all the product that you're using. But to put this product together, it takes a master blender to really make it worthwhile. So you have uh, the flavor of the cigar, the draw of the cigar, and the looks, the finish of a very fine cigar. And we have a man that has been working at the cigar business since he was six years old. For one reason or another, to, to eat. We I don't even really want to say that. <laughs> but who did he used to work with? He was with a famous company, and then he sort of went into business with you. Yes, he was a master blender for the Dunhill Company for 11 years. Mm -hmm. So he came over to us, and he's one of our partners, and now he's making our cigar. So it's Dunhill's loss, but Havana King profits. You, you, you're right. <laughs> we are here at Oceanica, and we'd like to meet the lovely owner, who happens to be a woman. Yes. And uh, you know her, so will you call her over? and uh, best customers. <laughs> okay, let's, let's meet her. Thank you. It's Emma Sanchez. Please come in. Hi, Hi Emma. Emma. Hi. Nice to meet you. Emma yes, Sanchez. well, and how appropriate. You've got your Havana yeah, King, Havana right? King. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Emma, you know, the holidays are just upon us here, and uh, you are sitting right here in the middle of a very busy mall where you have your store here, Oceanica. And what are you doing for the holidays, something special? Tell us what to look for and gifts that we can give people with cigars in mind. Well, um, I have prepared my own uh, special gift basket that we uh, think is a very nice holiday uh, uh, gift for everybody which uh, okay well here we have it we're bringing it in now look at this isn't this just gorgeous if I got this under my tree I would be very excited <laughs> 
thank you for being with us for this week's look at the Good Life Nightlife. Call City TV at 310-659-4477 with your story or with any questions. 